Go ahead. You Andy. don't put you don't put something in a safe to make it valuable. You put it in a safe because it's valuable. The New Testament documents were collected and protected and meticulously copied because very early on they were recognized as valuable. And in the fourth century, these pre-existing valuable witnesses and documents were collected and put in a document that somebody, we don't know who, titled the Bible. So sequentially, that's how we got our Bible. And so this is one of the things I argue for in my book. In fact, I've been teaching this for seven years. Now, when we preach and teach, instead of citing the Bible, we just drop back and say, John, an eyewitness of the resurrection says, Paul, who steps onto the pages of history as someone who hated the church says, Jesus said, um, you know, we cite James, the brother of Jesus. What would it take to convince your brother who's the son of God? James said, drop back, cite the authors. And again, it, it's just a different way. It's a different approach. And it, and, it's, and, and obviously it's more accurate. And, and, and before you come back in, Jeff, um, you believe actually that this is a more evangelistically effective way of presenting the well, claims I, as, as I well. It is because I've been doing it for years and the you know, I, I hear the stories, read the emails and get the thank you notes. Hey, I finally brought my brother. And, you know, I yes, it's more effective. And, and it's what the early church did. So it's what Jesus did. Sometimes Jesus said the law and the prophets. Sometimes Jesus says Moses. Sometimes Jesus says David. So, you know. And and, 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 and and I suppose this is the point, Jeff, is that the early church, they, they were, you know, doing the stuff that we now see as this this authoritative, infallible, infallible word in the New Testament. So they, they were, were by definition, they weren't referring to all of the documents that we that you would now say, say, say are, are the word of God, Jeff. So so I, I think this is the point Andy's driving at is if they could do it, so can we. We don't have to, as, as it were, um, say the bible says it's it's the the testimony of who the bible then records that, that that's yeah. the important part of that but you yeah, know right. and it was inspired yeah yeah, yeah but, there's and there's there's a, just a difference in in perspective here and this this controversy actually goes back to, to the time of the reformation in terms of um is is it the scriptures that create the church is it the scriptures uh, that have the ultimate self-attesting authority or does the church recognize and 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 declare the the scriptures to be the authoritative word of god which which way are we going? Which part is the foundation? And I think that's that's critical. Uh, we, we would agree 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says all scripture is theonoustos, it's breathed out by God. So the, the origin of scripture is from God. The Holy Spirit of God carries people along to write what they write. And it's interesting. So because, why don't we just cite the people that were carried along? Well, let me just let me just point point this out that in in the, the time of the apostles, um, after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension, the Apostle Peter refers to the writings of the Apostle Paul that were happening in his day. And he says in 2 Peter uh, 3.16, he says, uh, talking about things that Paul is writing that are difficult to understand, he says, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting is that in the time of the Apostles, during the writing of these works, the Apostle Peter equates the letters of Paul, the writings of Paul, with the other holy scriptures he's equating the writings of paul with the mm -hmm. old testament scriptures you're, you're making my point no i'm actually going against your point what i'm saying is that they weren't just writing letters and then the church comes later and says well yeah we recognize that as authoritative what they were giving was theonustos breathed out words of god so what i was saying was is that you are telling people today that jesus rose again from the dead because why the authoritative word of god tells me so that's where i get it from that word of god and I think it's important to recognize that distinction is that it is, I think, appropriate, and I don't think we should shy away from this, to be able to tell the world, well, the Word of God says. I don't think we should shy away from that. And I think that's one of the concerns I have with this apologetic methodology is, mm -hmm. is teaching Christians to actually um, be afraid to say, well, God says. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think that is the ultimate concern of many who, who would take the view that Jeff does, that, right, that, that right. If, if the Bible is true, uh, inspired, uh, a living word, we should be able to stand on it and preach from it without having to kind of bow to the, the neutral ground, as, as Jeff puts it, of, of you know, as though as though we're, we're, we're required to but do it's, that. It's not incorrect to say the Apostle John wrote. It's not incorrect to say Luke wrote. It's not in, it's not incorrect to say the Apostle I mean, there's. It's. I'm not incorrect. It's just different terminology. And again, whatever on ramp gets a person into the text and keeps the conversation going, I'm all for it. Let, let's talk about um, an on ramp.